Well, hello everyone and welcome to this English lesson about body positions. As human beings, we do a lot more than just sit and stand. There's a lot of different ways we um position our body as we go through the day depending on what we're doing. In this English lesson, I'll look at about 30 different body positions that we use during the day and at night. Uh some are very very common and some are only used in special circumstances but I thought it would be worthwhile because these are all very common words and phrases that we use in normal English conversation. So, once again, welcome to this uh English lesson about body positions. I think it's going to be a fun lesson. Crouch. So, we'll start with this one. Uh when you crouch, you kind of get down in a position like this man and you might think this looks like squat because it kind of does look like squat. These are the same. When you crouch down, you make yourself a lot shorter by going by bending your legs. If you've ever played video games, especially the video games that we call first person shooters, sometimes in the video game, you will crouch because you want to hide from the enemy. So, whenever you crouch, you get down just like this man is doing so that you are not as tall. You bend your legs and you crouch. And again, you might be wondering what's the difference between crouch and squat? Well, not a lot. It is the same position. So, this person is squatting. This is a squat. We can squat as well. It is the same position as crouching. But we also use this when we talk about exercise. Sometimes people go to the gym and they will do squats at the gym. They will get weights and then while they're holding the weights, they will go into this position and then they will stand up again to work out their leg muscles. So, the first two body positions, crouch and squat very much the same. Here's a very familiar one. At least it should be familiar to you. Probably the two basic body positions are sit and stand. Sit is what you do when you are on a chair or on a couch. Sometimes it's nice to sit and relax. Um this is a very common body position in my part of the world. You might actually sit on the ground. That might be more common or you might sit on a cushion uh or you might sit in a chair sit on a chair or sit on a couch. Uh, all of those are valid ways to describe sitting. This guy by the way is sitting cross-legged but I think in American English, they say cross-legged but anyways, he has one leg over the other. I'll talk about cross-legged a bit more uh it with another body position. So, stand is what you do when you are not sitting. Before you walk and when you're done walking, you are usually in a standing position. Um this is something you can describe a person by saying uh this person is standing. You can tell someone to stand by just saying stand or stand up but probably the two most common positions, sit and stand. The rest of the positions I talk about will be less common to you but still quite common in the English language. On all fours or on your hands and knees. This is a common position when you lose a contact lens. If you're someone who wears contact lenses and one falls out, you'll often go on all fours or you'll go on your hands and knees to look for that contact lens. I think this person is actually doing an exercise but when I saw this picture, I like to imagine that he's on all fours because he lost a contact lens and he's trying to find it or maybe he's on his hands and knees uh looking for something that he dropped. Something very very small. By the way, when you're my age, if you go down on all fours, it's hard to get back up again and sometimes this makes my knees hurt. So, I try not to drop things on the floor very often but uh, definitely if you drop something on the floor and you need to get down close to the floor to see it, you might go down on all fours or you might go down on your hands and knees. By the way, um you don't need the word down in there. You can just say go on all fours or go on your hands and knees but it sounds better to me. It describes the action better. To kneel. So, when you kneel, you put both knees on the ground or just one knee on the ground. It doesn't have to be both. People kneel for a variety of reasons. 
I know that when we take a family photo, sometimes people will kneel in the front row and sit in the second row on a chair and stand in the back row. So, let me describe that again. If you have a lot of people in one place and you need to take a picture of 20 or 30 people, sometimes people in the front row will kneel. They'll go down on their knees. They will kneel. The people in the second row will sit on chairs and the people in the third row will stand. Um sometimes depending on your religion as well, you may pray in this position. You might kneel to pray if you are a religious person and that's one of your practices. Uh you might have a prayer mat and you might kneel on that mat in order to pray. So, kneeling when you go down on both knees or just one knee. You can kneel on one knee as well. Um and uh you're further down than crouching definitely. And this is an interesting one. This person is kneeling but in the world of sports, we have a description of this position. When we are in this position, we say that you can take a knee. This person is taking a knee. I can tell people on a team, hey, take a knee. I'm going to talk. Sometimes, if people on a sports team are protesting, if they are concerned that there is racism in their sport or they have a concern, they might take a knee during the national anthem and that would mean they go in this position instead of standing. I'm not going to get into uh the controversy surrounding that but certainly if you see someone in this position, you could say this person is kneeling or you can say this person is taking a knee. So, going down on one knee. To stoop down. Sometimes, you have to bend over a little bit. When you stoop down or when you stoop, um by the way, this word is less common. I don't use this word very often. Um so, when you stoop down, it means your head and shoulders are forward a little bit. If you go through a door that's not very tall, um you sometimes have to stoop down to walk through the door. You have to kind of lean your head and your shoulders forward um in order to step down. Um so, we had this when I was younger. We lived in an older house and if you were tall, you had to stoop down to get through the door. So, that is the body position or action you would need to take in order to get into the house. This is something students sometimes do. They will slouch. Let me say that again so you understand the pronunciation. They will slouch. When you slouch in a chair, you do not sit upright. You slide down in the chair like this person is doing. You don't use the chair properly. When students in a class aren't interested, sometimes they will slouch and eventually, sometimes they'll fall asleep but that's rare. But uh, yes, when you slouch, you sit in a chair and then when you slide down so that you're in this position, we would say that you are slouching. Um often teachers will say, don't slouch uh or teachers will say, um sit up straight, stop slouching uh because slouching shows disinterest. It shows that you don't really care about the class. Sometimes our kids will do this as well at the supper table. They will slouch or they will tip their chair. That's not really a body position but I should have had a slide for that. They will tip their chair back on two legs. So, it's similar to slouching. It's uh considered a bad use of a chair. So, the opposite of slouching is to sit straight up. This gentleman, he is sitting straight up but he could also be sitting straight up with his back against his chair. So, the back of the chair, he could put his, I'm trying to move the right hand here. He could sit further back and we would still say he is sitting straight up but when you sit straight up, your back is straight. You're not slouching or leaning forward. It's just a good way to sit. And then we have of course, bend over. Sometimes, you drop something. Sometimes, you need to pick something up and in order to do that, you need to bend over. When you bend over, you lean the top part of your body, your upper body forward. By the way, I should explain that for a sec. Everything above your belt, we call the upper body. Everything below the belt is called the lower body. So, when you have um oh, 
Uh, you might hear this with a sports player. He has an upper body injury or he has a lower body injury. So, upper body, everything above your belt or above your waist and lower body before. When you bend over, you bend your upper body over and then you pick something up or you put something down uh or maybe I don't not sure what this lady's doing. Maybe she dropped her groceries and she needs to uh bend over and over to in order to pick them up again. This is when you can hurt your back when you bend over or if you do it improperly. So, to sit cross-legged, I'm going to keep saying legged. I think this is the British pronunciation. When you sit cross-legged, you sit like this. You sit on the ground and you cross your legs. You can sit cross-legged on a couch, I guess but usually for me, I think as a teacher, when I see people sitting cross-legged, it's usually at lunch or Um maybe during a class, the teacher says, you know, just sit in a circle and read the current book or read a story. So, students will sit cross-legged in order to do that. Again, I think the American pronunciation might be cross-legged but I say legged, cross-legged. I by the way, I asked all my colleagues, all the colleagues I could find yesterday, do you say cross-legged or cross-legged? And most of them said cross-legged and then some started to doubt themselves. So, but we're gonna go with cross-legged. To curl up in a ball. So, this is a position that's related to emotion. When someone's feeling a lot of negative emotions, if someone's feeling sad or feeling depressed, they might lay in bed during the day or at night and they might curl up in a ball. When someone gets injured, they might curl up in a ball. If someone is in pain, they might curl up in a ball. So, you can see this person is putting their body into the smallest form that we can and it looks a little bit like a ball. Um many many years ago, I had a kidney stone. A kidney stone is a sharp pain in your kidney uh and so, I was in pain and so, I was curled up in a ball. Um so, that's a very common description. Someone who is very sad, someone who is very upset, someone who is in pain might curl up in a ball. Um they might um try to be more comfortable by doing that. Uh to lean over. So, lean is interesting because you can lean against a wall but when you lean over, it generally means like this. So, you can lean over to talk to someone. If Jen and I were sitting in a movie theater, I can lean over and ask her a question. I can lean over and ask one of my kids a question if they're sitting beside me. So, that's moving the upper body this way. In this picture, um the man and woman are both leaning over towards each other. Um instead of lean. So, this person, you can lean against a wall. You can lean forward. You can lean backwards. Um you can lean to from side to side but it simply means that you are either moving your upper body or you are against something, okay? Um students will often lean against their lockers when they are standing in the hallway at school. Um sometimes I will lean on the counter in the kitchen while I'm talking to Jen. So, to lean is simply to put your body in a not you're still standing but you're touching something. There, that's a good way to describe lean, I think. On tiptoes. So, sometimes you can't see because the people in front of you are really tall and you want to try to be taller. In order to do that, you might go on your tiptoes. You might go on tiptoes. So, that's when you have your foot flat on the ground and you just go up on your toes. This person is standing on their tiptoes. Um little kids often stand on their tiptoes when they're trying to see something. They will go up on their tiptoes. Uh, in order to see it. Uh it's it's kind of an interesting word, isn't it? Um let's look up the official meaning. Meaning of tiptoes. So, it says, so to walk directly and carefully on one's toes, raised to keep one's weight up and to be taller. Interestingly enough, when you tiptoe, it also means to walk quietly. Okay? So, when you stand on your tiptoes, it looks like this. When you walk on your tiptoes, it usually means you're trying to walk in a way where you're really, really quiet. Um I don't like it when tall people um 
stand in front of me if I go somewhere. So, not, not, not enjoyable. I am of average height. So, I'm not short but I'm not tall. I think I'm five foot ten and a half. In Canada, we measure uh, in feet and inches when we talk about height. I know we're a weird country. So, to lie. So, notice this is the verb lie. When you lie somewhere, it means you are like this. You are prone on the ground. You are flat on the ground. I shouldn't use prone because that usually means face down. Um in English though and I'm really bad at this. I often use the verb lay which is incorrect but I still use it. I will say I'm going to lay down. I should technically say lie. I can lay my phone on my desk. And when I go in this body position, I am going, I will use the verb lie. So, when you lie, you are not standing or sitting and sometimes you're sleeping. Sometimes you're just doing this. You're just looking at the clouds because it's fun to lie in the grass and look at the clouds. Um when you are prone, it generally means that you are lying with your face down or you're basically the front of your body against the ground or a mattress. Um when you are in the fetal position, you are usually curled up in a ball on your side. We call this the fetal position because it's like how babies are in the mother's womb. I guess that's probably where it comes from. Um so, this person is in the fetal position. Some people sleep in the fetal position but sometimes people are in the fetal position again because they might be in pain. Uh, they might be um sad or depressed. They might just be in the fetal position because of how they are feeling. Sometimes we lie face down or we lie on our stomach. So, when you lie on it should say lie on your stomach. Sorry, that's a mistake. We should have that in there. So, you can lie face down or you can lie on your stomach. Um this is how some people sleep. I will sleep like this a little bit sometimes. If I'm having trouble sleeping and if I'm tossing and turning, when you toss and turn, it means you can't fall asleep on your back. You can't can't fall asleep on your side. So, you try different positions. Sometimes I will lie on my stomach. So, but we we sometimes say lie face down or lie on your stomach. Sorry for the mistake there. Lie on your stomach. Sometimes you lie on your back. And sometimes you lie on your side. Notice this is a little different than the fetal position. This person is definitely curled up in a ball whereas this person is a little more relaxed, right? So, you can lie on your side. Um I usually lie on my side when I sleep but sometimes my I have my arm under my pillow and under my head and then it will fall asleep. Um so um not always the best way to sleep because it's not fun when you're Do you know what I mean when I say my arm falls asleep? You know when your arm gets all tingly or your leg gets all tingly um because of how you're sitting? We say that it has fallen asleep. So, sometimes my arm will fall asleep and then it'll be all like uh and feel funny. Bow. So, sometimes you bow. In some countries, you bow out of respect or it's a greeting. In some places, you bow at the end of a play. If I was an actor in a play, When the play is over, I might come out and bow. Um so, it is a position where you lean forward slightly. Um you might have your hands at your sides um but you will come out and bow. Generally, bowing in North America is after a performance of some kind. Someone might play the piano for a large audience and when they're done, they might stand up and bow. As the audience is applauding, they might bow. Um but yes, in some places, it is culturally um significant to bow to people. It's something you do out of respect or greeting. There's another pronunciation um but it means something else and that's bow. I can wear a bow in my hair although men don't usually wear bows in their hair but this is a bow. I shouldn't confuse you. Uh and then on the feminine side, there's something called a curtsy. Um generally, we see more bows than curtsies now. Curtsies are becoming less common. If I go and see a play and if there are men and women in the play, at the end of the play, they will all come out and bow. Sometimes the women will curtsy. Um if you go and see uh 
a dance recital or if you go watch a dance, you're probably more likely to see uh women curtsy or girls curtsy at the end. But uh I think bowing has become much more common in North America. But this is called a curtsy where you bend slightly at the knees uh and if you're wearing a dress or skirt, you kind of hold it a little bit. Bob the Canadian is not an expert on how to curtsy but uh I have seen it. And so, we talk about raise your hand. This is a little more of an action but it's also a body position. The action is raising your hand. The body position is to sit there with your hand up waiting for the teacher to call on you. Um so, um when you have um when you have a class and you say to the students, does anyone know the answer? They will raise their hand to indicate that they know the answer. That is a common way for people in uh North American classrooms to indicate that they have an answer for the teacher and probably around the world as well. Sometimes you stand with your hands on your hips. This can be comfortable. This can be to show defiance. This can show that you're serious about something. Sometimes if you watch sports, the coach will stand on the sidelines with their hands on their hips. So, your hands are then actually right on your hips. I sometimes stand this way because it's just comfortable but um this person just looks happy to stand with their hands on their hips but it's certainly another body position um which has no real meaning but um yeah, sometimes I notice it a lot with sports. Uh coaches often stand with their hands on their hips on the sidelines. Headstand. So, we have headstand and handstand. I'm sure you can figure out the difference. A headstand is when you invert your body. So, you are now the opposite of normal. Your head is towards the ground uh, and your feet are up in the air. That's how we would describe it. Your head is on the ground. Your feet are up in the air and you balance on your head. So, this is a headstand. You will see people do headstands sometimes if you go and watch gymnastics uh, or you might just see people doing it for fun at the beach. If you are physically fit and able to, you might do a headstand. And if you're really strong, you might do a handstand. I don't recommend doing handstands this close to the edge. I'm pretty sure this picture is photoshopped because no one in their right mind would do a handstand that close to the edge of the water. Um but definitely, this is a headstand and this is a handstand. Um I used to be able to do both. I probably could still do a headstand but I'd have to do it against the wall and I think if I tried to do a handstand, that wouldn't work and I used to be able to walk on my hands when I was younger. Maybe that should be my New Year's resolution to get in good enough shape that I can do a headstand and a handstand again. Although, when you do a headstand, all the bl- blood rushes to your head and it makes you feel funny. So, sometimes you'll hear this phrase in a police show. You'll hear them say, up against the car, spread eagle. That means that your legs are apart and your arms are apart. So, you are um spreading out your legs and spreading out your arms. Police officers often have people spread eagle so they can pat them down to look for weapons or other things they shouldn't have. But if you do watch uh Canadian or American TV or British TV, when they arrest someone, they might say, get him up against the car, spread eagle. Um let's search him for whatever they need to search for. And then we have a the word straddle. Straddle is when your legs are on both sides of something. So, this person is sitting backwards on a chair and we would say he is straddling the chair. When you ride a horse, you straddle the horse. When you ride a bike, you technically straddle the bike. We don't use that word to talk about cycling but uh, technically, anytime your legs are on both sides of something, you are straddling it. You can straddle a fence. When you climb a fence and if you sit on the top with one leg on one side and one on the other, we would say that you are straddling the fence. And then there's what's called hang. When you hang, you simply find a bar and you put your hands on it and you hang. I do this. I don't do a lot of chin ups or pull ups but I do hang from a bar a little bit every day just to kind of stretch out this part of my body. 
Um it's supposed to be good to hang every once in a while. Uh it's supposed to be good for your back and good for your arms and shoulders for sure. And then recline. I do this every day. Recline is when you sit and you your upper body leans back a bit and then your feet are usually up. So, this person is in a chair that's called a recliner and you can recline in a chair like that. So, you're not sitting straight up. You're not slouching. You're just tilted back a little bit. You're leaning back a little bit for comfort. So, uh this is probably the nicest way to sit when you read a book. It's nice to recline in a chair at the end of the day to relax a little bit. Always fun. 